Hello everybody, thanks for joining us. Um, so we were going to do the... Uh, we were going to just stream the Holy Grail part two, but I've decided to do this discussion for logistical uh, Hello, reasons. everybody. Thanks for logistical. What the fuck am I talking about? Anyway, so um, we have a full panel today. So Tiffany Lockhart is back with us. So thanks for putting up with us again. We do appreciate it. <laughs> Hello. Um, and we've missed, we've missed her massively, haven't we, guys? It's just not the same, is it? Yeah. Like, reluctantly, I don't like saying that, but but it is true. <laughs> Yeah, she was, she was wow. throwing us away like trashed up. Yeah, so. <laughs> like trashed up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad to be back. Well, that's good. Um, so, mm -hmm. um, yes. Yeah, so, what I thought we would talk about is, um, Lon. You see, I've always try. I always come from the perspective that that monsters are not born they are made and it, it's kind of a nurture versus na nurture versus nature type of a perspective that there are exceptions it's complicated but i, I don't long came from a challenging background most people admit that it doesn't mean that his behavior is enabled in any way it doesn't mean that we're making excuses for him it, from my perspective it's just about understanding it's trying to figure out why is this guy so weird different strange criminally insane whatever you want to say um there's so much about his character that i find intriguing for all the wrong is i would assume every single person that's listening to this <laughs> chat right now thinks the same thing i would imagine <laughs> so it's about Absolutely. i mean and and we, it's, it's just about because we disagree tiffany don't we quite fundamentally with regard to Lorne's awareness of what he's doing. I think it's where we have our sort of um, disagreement, really. I, I, I don't think it... On one level, he is aware of what he's doing. On another, he isn't aware of his conditioned, his conditioned mind and the things that he was taught, his lack of, of, of self-worth. These are things that he can't get to the root of, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I definitely have a difference of opinion there. Um, we've certainly had our conversations, probably call them arguments. But uh, when it comes to that, I I absolutely think that Lauren is fully aware of what he's doing. He doesn't need to know all of the consequences that can come along with any of the actions. He, he doesn't have to. But he does recognize that something is wrong. So whether it's just legally or it's not the right thing to do. He can get in trouble with his mom or something like that. Or it's or it's something wrong. He he knows that he shouldn't have ran away with Betty's money. But he did it anyway yeah. because that served his purpose. So, you know, in particular, when we talk about Lauren, you know, a lot of the focus is on to catch a predator and what he did there. And, you know, some of what we talk about is you know, did Lauren really know what he was doing was wrong? And you say no, because you have no, a different opinion. Can I, can I just, intro, I don't, I don't think no. I don't think You no. have said no many times. But, but this is where our kind of disagreement, it's almost like I can't fully explain what I mean. So on a criminal level, of course he knows what he's doing is wrong. Even on a moral level, he knows what he's doing is wrong. But I believe that people like Lorne don't have the self-awareness and the level of consciousness to behave like we do, or not well-adjusted people. I think that, and this is the whole reason for the conversation, my perspective is, that when you read, I read books, and I'm sure you know, you're aware of this and most people are, this first seven years, roughly, there's no exact time, but a, a, a vital to your growth. If you're brought up a certain way within the first seven years, it's almost impossible to have you as a well-adjusted person, depending on what's done. Now, of course, there are people that have been raised in a lot worse situations than Lorne, but 
Lon isn't, you know, like um, someone who can't function at all. He's just deluded. That's his biggest problem. Um, you know, there are, there are more evil people in the world than him. Um, I just believe that he doesn't understand, he doesn't have the awareness. So when I was listening to one of the calls that you, you were talking to him and he was giving that ridiculous story about um, driving down to the Sting House and it, he thought about Bud and nearly turned back. It was brilliant to listen to him try and wriggle his way out of it. He knows he's bullshitting. He knows he did wrong. But he can't, he doesn't have the insight to understand that all of the problems that he's creating are, are his own. His self, he's creating his own fucking mess. Because if he did have that awareness, why would you do it? And it's, I believe it's the same for everybody. So my perspective, and it's the sort of, you know, the, the topic of the conversation is, what led him on this, what created this person that is totally unable to experience to accept any responsibility and in my view his lack of responsibility is what makes the lawn saga what it is if it without that there wouldn't be anything really i mean you'd look at the chat log and all that but i, I don't think we'd still be talking about it now do you um what have you got to say about any of that <laughs> Well, I have, I have a question about about Lauren, um, about his awareness during his conversation with Kayla. He obviously knew it was wrong, and, and we can tell that by um, how he was trying to hide it, by the lengths he went to, to to hide it from everybody. But do you think he knew that he was harming Kayla? Or do you think he thought that what he was doing was harmful to her? Or he never even considered it because he was just thinking about himself? And what he wanted. What do you think? I, I think. Uh, oh, go on. Sorry. I, I, think, I think he didn't I think anyone. he was harming her. I, I think, in his own twisted, fucked up way, he thought again and again. By the way, when we talk, when we're talking about this subject, I said a lot of things already in past dreams, so I apologize in advance if I repeat myself, guys. Um, especially when it comes to the Mama Gwen thing. We always do. But dude, I don't worry about it. I think that uh, when he was talking to Kayla, just like he justifies the Molly thing, that as long as there's emotions behind it that are legitimate and sincere, uh, that are romantically legitimate, uh, and it wasn't just a normal situation where some weirdo was talking to some, you know, he got himself, he got himself into a position where he, he had himself emotionally invested with her. And, and he thought the, you know, uh, uh, also her with him, um, that anything he did beyond that was justified by sincere feelings. And I think that he recognized that the real world would not only look down on this, but would throw his ass in prison. Um, and to a certain extent, he's kind of following the old romantic uh, formula, Romeo and Juliet are, you know, the world's against us, but we'll... Uh, you know, we'll persevere because our love's so strong, that kind of bullshit. So I don't think he thought he was harming her. Uh, I, th I think he actually thinks he was enhancing her life somehow, even though she's the daughter of two wealthy, successful professionals, and he's offering her bologna sandwiches and, and, uh, and five minutes with Bud, and that's it, <laughs> you know. And that's on a good day. That's a good day, yeah. Yeah, that that's what's great about Lauren. I mean, the great. I, I don't want to say, the long saga, you mean? It, he actually deludes himself uh, to the to the point where uh, his actions are not immoral. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good I way agree. of putting it. I agree with that. I agree. I think that because in the Lauren, in my opinion, lacks the insight to understand the damage he would have caused to somebody because when he was speaking to you tiffany he just recited every word that you were saying he didn't really understand the words it's like when you're a kid and you're saying the lord's prayer you don't fucking know what it means it's just like brainwashing well that's not to dismiss anything that you said because you tried as good as what anybody could but he just he just isn't it's like it's almost like he's someone just put in the chat then i can't remember who it was i think he might have been long leg strong or something so, um 
Lorne acts on pure impulse and desire, which is true. So he lacks that kind of um, that centre, that reasoning centre that we are able to to get. No, I think that that's caused by a lack of this lack of responsibility because we all do shit things. I've done shit things, and you learn. You, you the only way that you grow as a human is by taking responsibility for them um, and saying. Fucking hell, I was a shit person. So I need to change. And it hurts because you don't want to think of yourself that way. But Lorne's like incapable of doing that. And that's what interests me the most. Why can he not? I mean, it's the hallmark of a bad person. It's about deception. It's about deceiving yourself and the world. You know, you will just... I know people that used to be, and some still are my friends, where they, they... just believe that they're a great guy without really, and I'm not saying they're all bad, but you have to look at your faults, identify them and work on them. And and that's where strength comes from. And for whatever reason, Lorne has never had that. And it interests me why, despite all of the help, he, he, he just never budges. That's, that's what interests me. His, his biggest handicap, above all, above any of this, is his selfishness. He's extremely self-centered. It's how everything affects him. You know, you know when, I, when I think about that, I think about that phone message he left uh, for Tiffany when uh, she was in uh, rehab and uh, probably on methadone or something to help wean her off heroin, which, by the way, how the fuck did that story like come into play? <laughs> I have no but, idea. <laughs> and, and, and his reaction was, it's not helping me any. And he does that a lot. He, he says shit like that a lot. You know, how does that affect me? And if you were to ask him, you know, look, um, like in the Ramona saga, here's a wonderful doctor who treats her well, who takes her to places, who who has a mutual, they have a mutual respect for each other. They laugh a lot. Um, wouldn't you want to see Ramona happy with somebody? If it's even if it's not you. And he will say yes, but he won't feel that way. Uh, he will never sacrifice anything for but, anyone he but allegedly But many, loves. many people that you would consider good will, are like that when it comes to romantic relationships. The, the part of clinging to a, a romantic thing yeah. is, is like an ego attachment and a possession type thing. It's like, you know, it's not... I, I'm not trying to justify and I, I, I wouldn't pick for my perspective I, w- I wouldn't identify that as being a a, um, an, a really um, massive... well no Andrew the reason why is because there's, there's two parts of a breakup and I've said this before and I apologize in advance one is getting over that person that's hard but then the harder part is you getting over the fact that that person got over you and that's ego and that's what he can't get. That's what he cannot let go of. Um, also, you know, he can't get past the first part either, for that matter. Um, but that's the hallmark of selfish selfishness right there. Uh, when it comes to a relationship, breaking up, and moving on, and wishing the best for the other person. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, the selfishness is... is... It's like, I think, I can't remember who I was talking to this about in a, in a conversation the other day. I, I think there's like a paradox of life. The more selfless you become, the better your life generally will be when it seems to be the opposite. It seems to be that you have to look after yourself primarily, which of course you kind of do. But the more selfless you are, and the and great example, I watched Ground Dog Day yesterday. My nephew came around, we had a pizza. And it's a really brilliant movie for, the get you know he, the the main character starts out as a miserable hates everybody and everything and he gets stuck in the same day and the only way that his day it, that the day improves is that he just does good goes out and starts helping people and becomes just a, a, a beacon of love a little bit like Shin really <laughs> um, and the world changes and everybody loves him and. Um, mm. There's a deep spiritual message there, and I can see some people having a bit of a pop, not a pop, but a disagreement with me in, in the chat, and I knew it would go this way. People don't share my perspective, and it's not, 
I understand it because it's the easiest thing in the world is to say, right, he's a piece of shit. That's the end of it. We can listen to the calls. We can listen to him getting tortured and we don't have to feel any pity. Don't feel any pity because he's responsible for his own life. It's not your responsibility. But it's not, in my opinion, it's not black and white. You know, we're all human. It doesn't mean we enable his behavior. It doesn't mean that we don't deal with people... Innocent people need to be protected at all costs, and if it means people like Lorne get eradicated, then so be it. But ultimately, we have a responsibility to better the species, and the only way we can do that, we can't line them up against the wall and shoot them. We need to understand what leads people to be like this, and then we can stop it. You know, so that that's my perspective, and it is an unpopular one to take. It's very it's easy. It's a very easy one to just go, oh, let's shoot him, let's fucking kill him all. You know, let's listen to the cars and torture him. Well, yeah, it's fun, but let's look at the bigger picture. You know, what what is it that let is it is he just born this way? Was it inevitable? Was it his destiny? These are all interesting questions um, that mm. are fun to explore, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people misinterpret. Well, a lot of people who who uh, who comment about um, you know whether you're wishy washy or whether you're uh, a sympathizer or whatnot. They they don't really understand where you're coming from. I think um, it took took me a while too, Andrew, because I you know, like I, I've said many, many many times, you're such a better person than I am. That's not true, um, dude. That's all. Well, <laughs> when it comes, especially when it comes to judging other people. You know, you always try to not look necessarily look for the good in people, but look for the similarities in people. No, I talk a good game, but I don't always live like that. You know, I I judge people too easily. I've got a fucking million miles to go, but I think I understand it on a on this kind of a level, or I'd like to think so, because you can only really gain the kind of wisdom if you've been through similar situations where you can look right. back at your it's own you, which, not you that I've to tried to fuck a kid but to. yeah I've certainly yeah. done bad shit there's no doubt about that um so yeah I mean again it's not it's not necessarily uh you trying to find the good in people you know it, part of understanding something is is to try to relate to it and 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 try to find like I said the similarities that we have what do we share what are these traits that we share okay now let's figure out what went wrong that kind of analysis is not sympathizing at all that kind of analysis is just an attempt to try to understand it and whether it be for entertainment value whether it be for actual educational reasons whatever it is you know having an open mind about trying to discover things uh requires you put your judgment aside sometimes and and try to get yourself in the shoes of that person and otherwise you know, you're right. It just turns into a hate fest. You know, fuck this guy. I mean, you, we all feel that way. Of course. We all do. But we we want to understand it, though. Well, can I just respond to something Kathy Mack has said in the uh, mm-hmm. chat? So thanks for this comment, Kathy, by the way. Andrew's just said, uh, uh, Kathy's just said, Andrew, I feel that Lorne has rejected <laughs> every chance he's been given to better himself and to be understood. How far does society have to go to fix him? Now, it's not... Of course, I think there should be a cut-off point. If you look at all the resources that Lorne has wasted, fucking hell, we know he's not going to... In my opinion, Lorne is a lost cause. He'll never get to a point where he'll be a use, where, he, where he wouldn't be like he is. What what I'm interested in is how did he get here. So, of course, I, I don't think that... The, the, the primary thing, in my opinion, for people like Lorne is to protect the people that may harm him, which means he's got to be on... He's got to be in, on the register forever which he will be thankfully he's got to be monitored forever and then this is that's beyond the scope of this video what do you do with them do you shove them on an island do you send them to the moon that's a conversation for another time but i understand what you're saying I, i'm not saying that let's spend all of the country's resources on building up people like lord he's had his chance and he doesn't want to get better but i think there's a little bit of a the reason i want to have this conversation is can we kind of identify if there were things that happened to him that have made him, that have made his life more difficult than what it might have been for me or you? Um, Because I really believe that if certain things are done to people at certain ages or they're not nurtured the right way, they're fucked for life and there's no way back. What makes you think his life was any more difficult than you or me? Well, I mean, mean, well, I I don't, well, I don't. I'm just saying that's why you know we're having this conversation. Like I said, there's a lot right. of there's a lot of factors that go into play. Um, 
you know, genetics is used. There was somebody on Joe Rogan recently was talking. He wrote a book about. Um, I'm gonna have to read it. I've not read the book yet, but it's just about how much of our destiny is determined by our genetics, and how much of it is determined by our environment. Because they've done studies with like identical twins and then split them up. I'm gonna have to get that book. <laughs> Maybe I should have done that before we had this chat. But let's go. Um, should we maybe get to the point of the um, of his kind of early life? Uh, Mother dear. Yeah. Um, so, because Tiffany, you you we because you've always said you you feel sorry for Baby Lawn, but you don't feel sorry for him now because he's continually making the bad decisions, which of course most people will agree with, but. You you kind of do identify that he had it pretty tough, don't you? When when he was growing up. Sure, I'm I'm sure that he had it tough. Um, I'm sure that he had it more tough than some, and and certainly not as extreme as others. There, you can hear about these horrific childhoods that people have, where they're beaten relentlessly. You know, the abuse, they're neglected, they're locked away, and it's really sad. Um, so in comparison to something like that, when we look at severity of circumstances, we can say, well, you know, Lauren had a roof over his head. He had food. He was given the opportunity for an education. Um, and, and I'm, but I'm sure that it was difficult in the sense that he was raised by his mom, which is a little bit true, but not entirely true because there was a man in the house. We don't know what his relationship was with him as much because he really doesn't speak about him but he there was a man in his life until he was in his 30s so but as far as when he's he's speaking about his mom as really the the primary parental figure there that she yelled a lot she obviously had a lot to manage she had shit kids and from what i understand from the things that he's spoken about you know he, he was the youngest of course but i don't think that she had a group of angels that she was raising. I think they were running around smoking, you know, partying, doing that kind of stuff. Stealing. Stealing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, whatever, whatever was going on, but, um, I think we could look, there is, there is a clue though, uh, of what's going on, um, in these kids' hearts. If you look at, if you just kind of examine Roy a little bit, um, that's the closest we get to, to understanding his siblings, Roy doesn't have that malignant heart. He doesn't have that that cynical, diabolical, you know, uh, thoughts like that we know of. of. Yeah, that we well, you know, again, um, that we've heard of even, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, the drunk driving. Of course, it's it's just really stupid decisions on him. But I, I think he's just really stupid. Um, but Lauren is different. He has that black heart somehow he has that that psychopathy the to to have no empathy for anyone else but himself and that's how he runs his whole life and that's where it starts can i just say that i don't because it obviously it's, it's stirred up quite a lot of discussion in the chat and and people are, and i knew this would come along you know people have had worse childhoods than lawn and they didn't turn into but it's not about getting beaten it's not about abuse necessarily it's about the nurturing and the love and the attention. So I'm going to just put this scenario forward that he's the youngest in the family. He's getting bullied, potentially getting picked on. His father leaves him. That's going to create this real lack of self-worth. Um, if his mother's too busy to pay him full attention and she's not raising them in a good way, so she, you know, she's not giving them the attention they need because there's too many. And then let's say he has a male role model, but that real male role model hates him or dislikes him or doesn't give him any attention. It's going to create the self, the lack of self-worth. And I think that's Lon's biggest problem is he feels underneath shit about himself. That's what I think. Now, <laughs> I'll have to keep saying this because I know what people are going to be thinking. Well, that doesn't excuse it. He had the right chance. Of course it doesn't. He's always had a decision them to make and then we start getting into the realms of what is free will, which, well, which is for another time. 
But I, I just, the, my perspective is, because of, of course we hear stories about people being subjected to terrible forms of abuse, sexual abuse, torture, rape, and they're not making a good life for themselves. They come through it. Some people don't. Some people end up lifelong criminals. Some people end up murderers. Some people end up rapists. Lon ended up as a pathetic, whining loser. Um, but his, he has this bizarre following. We're all interested in him for some reason. He has this kind of, in my opinion, he has some form of emotional stunted development where at some point his emotional development just stopped. He's like a toddler. He's almost like a, a six or seven year old trapped in a man's body. The emotional intelligence is childlike. He's just not none at all. And and kind of I believe there's part of me that thinks that if you were getting picked on, if you looked up to your siblings and they all made fun of you and bullied you and your father fucked off and your mum is the only one that's giving you any form of attention, and maybe your stepdad's there, you cling on to him emotionally, he doesn't pay you any attention, it's going to create this huge feeling inside of feeling worthless. And that's what I believe Lorne feels. Now, it's up to each person to decide individually how, how much of a, of a disability that is in someone's life, if they're not able to overcome it. He happens to be not very good looking, not specifically talented by the looks of it, um, you know, he's been dealt a few bad hands, but, but, you know, people have been dealt worse. I have to keep saying that. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a great self-promoter though. You know, he's got the confidence from somewhere, you know, um, you know, we don't know where that comes from, but we, we got to step back like, just to go to, to his history in his family. And guys help me with this. If, if I get, if, uh, if I miss something, um, he he had his father uh, until he was three years old. Well, first of all, he was the youngest of six six kids. Of course, he had uh, another brother that left a big imprint on the world for him and uh, whatever. Um, but you know, so and and his father left shortly after that, two or three years after that. So we can only imagine that it probably wasn't the best relationship going on when Mama Gwen became pregnant with him. Um, that's th again, that's just my guess. And you know why they don't use birth control. He probably just wanted to feel skin on skin for the first five minutes and just blew it. But anyway, so they made Lauren. So Lauren leaves and, uh, I mean the father leaves and then Dale comes into the picture and he didn't come in till when Tiffany. Uh, I think it was maybe when he was around seven, something like yeah, that. Something it was, like he that. was still very young. Right. So there was a period of time where he was just being raised by his mom, then, we assume, unless his mom was, you know, seeing other boyfriends and whatever, mm -hmm. had other lovers during that time. We don't know. But she did have a good body at one point. We know that. <laughs> so, right. Um, and then uh, he, she meets Dale at when he's seven or eight or nine years old. And they're together for a long time. They had a good run, you know, until, of course, Dale decides to. Um, have an affair <laughs> on Roy's wife and then uh, runs away with her. Uh, you know, that must have hurt a lot. And and I, I can't help but think that since Lauren has a stunted growth pattern, and since we know he stunted way back, we, who knows, 9, 10, or 11, 12, that that betrayal by Dale had to have had some effect on him, an additional effect. That was also around the time he was starting to go bald, too, or was going bald. A lot of things were hitting him. Um, and and then she meets another guy. And what was his name? Guys, do you remember? No. The, uh, he yeah. wrote him in the prison letters. Um, was it called Mel. Derek? Mel. Mel. So, again, Lauren's looking at this thing like he's still a little kid, you know, who was his, who his mother's with, who his father is now. And Mel left, uh, according to some calls that I heard, uh, uh, I don't, don't know, or maybe it was comments. And, again, correct me if I'm wrong. Because one of the biggest problems she had was uh, Mama Gwen was enabling her grown-up, grown-ass boys too much. And that became an issue. So Lauren had no problem, you know, not saying, you know what, Mom, I'm going to step away. I, I don't want you to be alone for the rest of your life. 
I, I do. I, I want this to work. I don't want to be the reason for it's not for it not working. No, he went the other direction. He went, you know, oh, piece of shit. He's going to he's going to separate you from your kids. He even called himself kids when he's a grown ass man. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that says a lot, you know, so I think rather than his formative years being uh, being responsible for who he is, I think it's a little later. I think it's between 20 and 30, mm-hmm. maybe a little, little older. At least things that we could recognize as, as being possibly a source for who he is right now. I remember he told a story about his dad. He hadn't seen him in many years, I think. We all know the story about Bunky when he was little, when he went, went over to visit his dad. and <laughs> uh, Bunky stole his toy. And his dad heartlessly told him to let Bunky have the toy. And then there was the the time when um, he went over with his sister and he was so terrified. He just went over because she was going there and he munkled onto her leg. But then he told another story about how he went over to his dad's, him and one of his brothers maybe, went over to see his dad and they brought the beer. And they all sat over, sat over there with him and got drunk and Lorne... Um, whined that his father didn't offer to pay him for the beer and that was when he was like 20 or 21 years old and I think he hadn't spoken to his dad for many many years before that do you guys remember that yeah I do yeah and and, and the loaf of bread his father he lived next door to his father what? you know and wouldn't even bring him a loaf of bread so again and the other thing is the way he describes his father to Kayla in the chat log it's not so much he didn't give me love and affection for all these years. He he didn't show he cared. It's he didn't even send me a Christmas card or birthday cards. You know, what he was going to get out of the situation. You know, very uh, kind of a materialistic, selfish way of looking at relationships. But that's what he does. Well, and then he asked Tiffany if she thought perhaps selfishness is hereditary or genetic yeah. <laughs> I don't know uh, you know it's hard to tell when he formed when he became Lauren but we know when he stopped growing that's for sure well uh, what, somewhere what, what, somewhere b- b- prebubescent somewhere yeah it, it's kind of th- there's been no growth at all like the, the lawn that I've heard in the latest calls is no different than the lawn in the chat log you know, everything's the mm-hmm. same. There's no growth because, you can, like, like I said, at the risk of repeating myself, there's no pro, pro, growth whatsoever in life without taking responsibility. And, and it, 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 it's the hallmark of someone successful or not necessarily successful or it, defend, it depends what you would define as being successful because you can make all the money in the world and be an absolute twat and just rob people, you know. There's no responsibility there, you know. Um, but... Yeah, this it's it's it because you you guys have said or uh, you said that like Roy's got a heart of gold. You said that shit, didn't you? That's kind of interesting. I, I didn't say that. I, I I said he didn't have a malignant heart. No, you said in a pre- um, right. I thought. Well, he does have a good heart. Yeah, I. I but I, knew, I did. I say heart of gold. You really? might have not um, used those words, but you did say that. It, yeah, a well, little hyperbole, but that's yeah. Roy um, seems no, to be well, more just, self-destructive. Just a, yeah, sorry. I was just saying, Roy seems to be more self-destructive than than anything. Whereas Lorne is just destructive. He fucks other people over all the time. I mean, Roy has done things that can hurt other people. The drunk driving. Um, he gets drunk in front of his mother, which he knows upsets her. He, you know, he does crazy stuff. But ultimately, Roy hurts himself, and Lorne hurts other people. You know, what's really interesting is Roy takes care of his mother much more than Lauren does. And he doesn't brag about it. You know, he's always there. He cooks her breakfast. Uh, Lauren was actually concerned. I was listening to a call where Lauren was actually concerned that Roy was being too attentive to her because she needed to get up and walk around for her own health rather than Lauren, oh, Roy waiting on her hand and foot. And I, I think that always bothers Lauren too. I think there's a lot of jealousy there. I think he hates when Mama Gwen gives attention to Roy possibly any other kid but he can't do anything about that but roy at least he could punch down at and and say you know make a big deal about that and he'll 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 do everything he can 
to uh, deprecate Lauren, uh, excuse me, Roy in his mother's eyes. He'll make him make him uh, make him look like he's on the moral high ground and everything. His behavior, his conduct is, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, it's like he's very jealous, uh, but he doesn't get his ass over there and help his mother either. You know, um, that's massive, isn't it? Yeah. Massive. I mean, it's yeah. what we're talking about, his relationship with his mother. And really, I so when to... I talk about Roy, I, I think about those situations, you know, um, where, uh, you know, Roy, Roy does things with action and Roy and, and, and Lauren just proclaims, proclaims things. Lauren says, I love my mother more than anything, blah, blah, blah. Roy actually treats her like he does. There's the difference. So, like, it's interesting, very, very interesting to me that Lorne is, seems to be, I've noticed this a lot from people like Lorne. They have this over-exaggerated sense of loyalty to them. That's probably the wrong way of putting it, but they they seem to overemphasize their loyalty and love to their mother. Lorne does that greatly. Like, I love my mum, and it seems to be the cornerstone to his life, but yet his actual real life is anything but. He never spends time with her. He abuses her, takes advantage of her. Um, he exploits her for sure. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a look at his prison letters. Get me this book. Uh, send this along. Well, uh, even you know, make sure my stuff. Put a call into somebody. You know, it's all orders. He's barking orders at her. Yeah, just just the evidence that I've seen when we were there in court, and and she gets up and speaks and. It's almost like she was, ex you know, he expected it of her, and I didn't get the impression there was any gratitude there. It's like this guy, you know, and I've never said that Lorne isn't a bad person. I'm just interested in what makes somebody bad, and and this this it's a it's a philosophical thing. And when I was talking about that that book, the low the road less traveled, I think it's called. Sorry, I can't fucking remember. It's right in front of me, but I can't see because it's dark. The road less traveled. Yeah, probably, it? yeah. And it says yeah. that what makes evil is people that lie to themselves. It's as simple as that. They know the truth, more or less, most of the time, but they deceive themselves and decide to live a lie. And that's what Lorne does. Um, I've just always been puzzled how much self-awareness he actually has at what he's doing because if, you, if you're not able to recognise your own patterns, your own mind patterns, you don't have that... Awareness. I mean, it's going. I'm going back to what we was talking about before. But um, so, Lawrence. Well, for me, it's not. It's not a lack of awareness. It's a lack of acceptance. That's where I've always, I've always come from. A lack he of knows and get that. acceptance. Uh huh. He he won't he won't acknowledge his truth that he knows. That so for me, that's where the the disconnect comes from with your argument yeah. is that he does know. I believe that everybody knows when you're a shit person, you know that you're a shit person. You're gonna come up with all kinds of excuses. You can you're gonna try to delude yourself, and that's gonna come across even more when you're speaking to somebody. Like when he's talking about, oh, I was thinking about turning around and wanted to make sure nobody was there hurting her. <laughs> but the reality is. He knows that he's a shit person. That is why when Chris Hansen walked out, he knew he was in trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Yeah, when, I mean, so he, he knew he was when it, com when it comes from when it comes from a, a lack of awareness, I look at it from somebody who doesn't know. It's total ignorance. It's it's a blank page. You know, even even deep inside in their own thoughts. Yeah, so if everything. he was truly, if he was truly lacking awareness, then he would have sat there and been like, what, what's the problem? Right. I was talking to my girlfriend. Right. But, and he, but he, he wouldn't have tried to hide it. You know, he ahead. wouldn't have tried to hide it. He wouldn't have tried to hide all of the shit that he does. He wouldn't have ran away he, to Nashville. He wouldn't have, you know, started to cry every time something's brought up to him when he gets busted. When he comes up with his lies and he says, there was a car coming over the crest of the hill that blinded me and I swerved out of the way to avoid an accident. And that's why I hit the guardrail. When in fact, 
it was because he fell asleep. <laughs> yeah. I was so, just listening to that. Yeah. <laughs> and and that's when he gets upset. Oh, stop watching me. Like, you know, that that whole shit storm. I'm shy. For him. He, he, he I'm shy. Weird exactly. <laughs> exactly. He does exactly what he wants to do. The problem that mm-hmm. Lauren has is the things that he wants to do are either illegal or wrong. Meaning mm-hmm. someone's going to call him out for it. And he knows that's why he gets so pissed off. And he starts yelling and he starts trying to point the finger back. Will you do coke? Will you do this? Well, nobody else is perfect. They live so far in the future. You know, all, all of those types of arguments that never make any sense come flying out of yep. his mouth because he's got to get the attention away from him. So again, for me, it is not the lack of awareness. We're not talking about an ignorant person who doesn't understand because he does. He does understand he does not want to acknowledge. He refuses to because he can't so do that. So why why does he refuse to? Somebody's face. He's stupid. Because he's, he's stupid. a shit person. He's selfish. So he's was he fun. born? Was he born a shit person? I have no idea. Well, that's I have well, no well, idea. Well, that's what we're talking The reality is. The reality is at this moment. But then, you know, what created him? I have no idea. But the reality is, is that he refuses to acknowledge his own truth. That is why he will continue to be in that class. That mm-hmm. is why he will be on probation forever. That is why he did this. When he sits there and cries and says, I just want to understand. I just don't understand. I know yeah. that I said that stupid conversation, but I just don't understand. Yeah, I need he to figure understand. out why. It is, way, it is way more black and white to me than it is for you. And that is where the disconnect comes from. Yep. He, he, uh, he, exploitive is not a good combination with stupidity. Being both. It, it just, just doesn't work. You get called on your shit. You lose every time. I think what it comes down to, Andrew, to answer your question, I think he was born stupid. But all this other evil shit was, was definitely nature. I mean, uh, nurture. Uh, what was going on around him, how he saw well, the yeah, world. I think it's a combination of things. Of course, uh, Tiffany's made her feelings quite clear, and I knew that anyway, but um, I <laughs> agree. I, the funny thing is I agree with what she's saying. I, I, it's just that on, 100%. A, on, a, on a very deeper level, nobody is consciously insane. So why does Lorne continually come up with these stupid fucking excuses and he's so selfish he's such an asshole he doesn't give a shit about his i've never heard he's never done a selfless act that i'm aware of he he, he is no integrity i i don't my perspective is people just don't born like that and then that's it i think it's a combination of factors he has the choice on one level to do it that Tiffany's talking about. Of course, he knows he's doing the wrong thing. He knows he's sh- a shit person. He, he, he try. He thinks, and he deme- And the reason he th- comes up with these stupid stories is because he's he's basically insulting the intelligence of everybody that's listening. He believes that people are going to buy his bullshit. It's fucking remarkable. Yeah. Like that mac and cheese story is amazing. That's why it's so brilliant. It is. It's, it's brilliantly it's amazing. Fantastic. <laughs> And what's amazing about the mac and cheese story is that when he was telling you that story, Tiffany, do you remember when you were talking to him at some point and he told you that story when you were Debbie, I think, for the first time? Mm-hmm. And he, he was going on and he was saying, um, and he was reciting it word for word like he wrote, like he said in his in his, um, in his his video, in his example of my past video. And that really made me think that. And I was like, w- w- why is this like a rehearsed thing? So, he, of course, he, he, he's trying to come up, rather than look within and say, I was shit, I am a shit person. Then that's when the healing starts. Father, that's father. when the change yeah. begins. And that's when there'd be a fundamental breakthrough. Mm-hmm. But he's too afraid. And, and the, I know some people are going to roll their eyes, but tough shit because you're listening to my channel. So... Um, this, every decision that anyone ever makes ever is motivated by one of either two things, love or fear, without exception. Without exception, because there is nothing else, and fear is just the absence of love. Well, well, actually, fear should be, uh, it, it's, it's more than fear, I think it's pain. 
Pain but it encompasses but, a lot more than just fear. But, but that's it. That's yeah. still in. That's still fear, though. So when when yeah. he won't do these things, when he won't admit them and say I am shit, he's afraid, and he's afraid because he feels he, worthless. He's afraid of the world. And, you know, what did Confucius say? If you look into your heart and you find that it's pure, you have nothing to be afraid of. He knows his heart isn't pure. Yeah, he, but, he does. Know. Though absolutely, he does. Yeah, you know, let me ask you guys something. Um, if you were to have to put it into one word, what is his motivation for this? And it can be as, it doesn't have to be a lofty thing. It, it, his motivation it for what? Simple, for, for the way he acts, the, the delusions. Be, the, he just the, wants the, to um, feel good like everybody else. But unfortunately for I, Ron, I so. he doesn't know how to do that in a way that. I don't think it's for himself. I don't think it's for himself. He wants to, in my, to answer that question, my answer to that question is he wants to project an image that will get pussy. That's it. So he, yeah, wants, he's yeah, so he wants to feel good. Well, ultimately, if he gets the pussy, yes. But he doesn't feel good about, I don't think he feels good about but that, himself. But that, that, that motivation is behind virtually everything that most males do. So the, the, True. the, 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 the Everything that guys do is usually to procreate. So we have a we want to look good, we want to feel good, we want to earn money. Mm-hmm. It's built into us genetically to keep the species going. So we're, as a male or a female, you're one part of the whole, and it's a spiritual longing for connection to the other opposite polarity to become whole, and that's how the species procreates. So when you, it's very different for a guy than it is for for a woman, and I can't speak for women's motivations. But as a guy, you you work out, you uh, you have a genetic longing for coupling with the opposite sex, and it motivates Lorne. So he speaks to the catfishes and he tells them all kinds of nonsense because in his twisted brain he thinks it's going to get him laid, and he's never got laid as far as we know. You know, we, there's a good case for that. That motivates everything that he does, and most guys. There was some kind of study done where they, on rats, where they took out their ability to fucking, like, chop the bits off or something, and they just behaved in a complete. There's no point going into that, but you get where I'm going in. It was on a Joe Rogan podcast yeah. when they were talking about it. Is yeah, lit- his his is single minded though. His is absolutely myopic, single minded, focused, hyper focused. On that, we all do that. Of course, we do. We go to. But he's not aware of it, as we are. And and when you become a, he's not aware of what oh, he's no, no. doing uh, on that level. No. Like he, so when you become aware and you you because as as guys we're genetically we size up a woman instantly. You look at a woman and your genetics take over and go right. Do I find that attractive? It's just the way yeah. we are. And um, of course, Lorne has that, but Lorne's purely impulsive. He's not able to take a step back at that. But if you're aware of that as a guy, and you, as a guy, and you discipline your mind, you start to step outside of the box, and then that's how you become a good person because you don't just then treat women as objects; you treat them as equals because they are. They're not just a fucking thing to be screwed. Well, you you have to learn those rewards. You have to actually experience those rewards outside of that single-minded focus of getting pussy. You have to learn that, oh, getting good grades was great because, look, I got a job now. It's easier for me, you know, things like that. It has its own rewards. Once You you can't understand that until you've earned it, yeah. until you've experienced that. And he has never earned anything in his life. He has never learned anything in his life. So, you know, it, for him to get beyond that one single-minded focus of getting a woman, or somebody said in the chat, I think it was Ed Adami, uh, to, of, to do everything he can to not be alone, to share his hell with somebody else, that's his single-minded focus. And he doesn't understand these other rewards that are out there because yeah. he's never experienced them. Exactly. Because, because he's never earned them. Exactly. I, yeah. I, I agree. But, and... but going back – sorry. Sorry, dude. Go on. No, no, please go on that. No, I, I forgot what I was going to say. No. <laughs> okay. Well, I was thinking about going back to talking about his mother now. I think you know, we probably should consider it that that's what we're doing. I know. We haven't, we haven't laid down the base, the foundation yet for that discussion yet. Um, 
I, I think, uh, and again, tell me what you guys think. I think he grew up in a boundaryless environment at home. I think, you know, like they would pee with the door open, shit like that. They would say things. Look how he talks about his mother now. You know, you know, I joked about her earlier. She had a good body, you know. Uh, uh, oh, you're slutting around, huh? Um, you know, all this other stuff. I mean, we don't get into that. Normal people, normal families don't get into that individual, especially about your mother. You know, so there had to have been very few, if any, boundaries at all at home. But the boundaries were outside of the home where he just couldn't he just couldn't make his way through the world where he was a loner, where he was actually probably bullied in high school for all we know, you know, but home was okay. He could let it all hang out there. They all did the same thing. And I think yeah. this is part of, uh, part of what made, what makes him the way he is. I get the impression that he was never held accountable by his mother. There was never any real punishment other than just yelling at him. I, I think she's probably, it, it's, yeah, it's easier mm -hmm. to just say, go to your room. I don't want to talk about it anymore. You pissed me off rather than actually follow through with the consequence uh, for your child. Could that be because she was having a hard time? If she had, I mean, did she have six kids? Six, yeah, and I'm right. sure. I'm sure it's, it, it's difficult to, to follow through with punishments and consequences with six kids, especially when they're kind of wild. And I'm sure they took advantage of that. And there's no you decent see... father figure as well to help her out. Supervision. Right. It was like I, it was I, like Lord I, of the Flies. I agree that there wasn't there wasn't any supervision, but we see that. I, I, I mean, it could be different now. Obviously, Lawrence's a grown man, and his mother could have just given up. But you see, in the phone call when Debbie made Lauren call his mom and admit that he lied to her, he went over to Tony's and he got drunk and he drove home. She she said, you know, you're stupid. You're gonna go back to jail. You're going to lose your land. But then she said, well, I don't want to talk about that anymore. You're talking stupid. I'm hanging up the phone. And it could be that she had just given up by this point. But I, I always got the impression that that's kind of how it was when he was a kid, too. Like, I'll yell at you for a couple of minutes, but then I don't want to I don't want to deal with it. Just go away. Mm. I love Tiffany's response to it, too. Your, your mom thinks you're a fuck up. <laughs> no, your mom thinks you're a fucking moron. Moron. <laughs> Yeah. Think about that. <laughs> All the phone calls we heard about Mama Gwen, she's not she's not in lockstep with Lauren. Even his even when she read that stupid victim impact state, whatever it was in court, uh, I'm making a just, fool out of you. She was just mailing it in. But she feels, in in a sense, she understands what's going on and how the real world perceives your son. And and I often wonder, and you guys can tell me, did he did she read all the fucking letters he sent her? I don't know. I don't think I don't think that she did because from what I recall, when Ember had seen the letters, there were some that were unopened. Really? What the fuck? How does that not affect him? <clears throat> you imagine? I don't think he fucking cares. No, I don't think he cares either. Yeah, he well, them for something he he just it was something for him to do. Right. So I think he wrote. Benefit he wrote probably every day mm -hmm. if not more than that so yeah i could i can definitely see like oh, i have another letter <laughs> yeah. and it's just gonna be rambling you know he's really pissed off he feels like he's been screwed over um and, and he wants her to to support him and believe him that's what ultimately he wants he wants somebody who's gonna believe him and so far no one has. Including his mother. Including well, his mother. It, it, does his that. mother believe him when he tells her he never meant to do it? He was never going to nope. actually sleep with that nope. girl? Because I don't think she holds him accountable. I don't think she's ever said, no, Lauren, that's bullshit. No, I think well, you were there's, there's a little that. slight evidence of that, that she does not believe it. Uh, there's one letter that Kelp Hill, by the way, is doing this. This great stream on those uh, the great content on those letters. But there's one letter where he, he starts to go off into, you know, how NBC is a piece of shit and, you know, how the justice system is corrupt. But he starts it. He prefaces that letter by saying, I know you don't like hearing this. 
So it gives mm-hmm. you an idea that she wasn't exactly agreeing with him. I, I this. get the impression I... from everything that I've heard that she doesn't buy it because she she was it she had the awareness to know that Lorne was getting the piss taken out of him online, and she doesn't. I assume she doesn't even go on YouTube, and she was like, "They're just making a fool out of you." She knew yeah. what was going on, but Lorne was too stupid to see it. Mm-hmm. You know, she's so that think... means she's not stupid she knows what's gone on she will have known what the evidence was she'll have seen the tv show she'll have had her friends calling her saying have you seen this oh my god can you imagine <clears throat> oh, fuck. my son's on this show oh, fuck. i mean the poor bloody woman you know she's obviously fucked up but it's still pretty that's you know christ yeah i wonder if she just wanted to avoid talking about it and she never came out and said i don't believe you lauren you did yeah. something yeah. wrong when when you would bring it up and make all these excuses she would just say i'm i don't want to talk about that no more <laughs> and, <laughs> subject. and, and said, you know again going back to the boundary thing in that discussion it. where you know it's my car you know discussion um he he says the most mean hurtful thing without cursing at her without cursing at somebody that he can say to his mother he reminds her of the betrayal she felt when dale took off with rose roy's wife you know by saying you know laurie and whatever ralph are no better than dale that hurt her and, and that was the last thing he said to her which Leads you to believe that he is so invested into his mother's life, and 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 uh, maybe they had some discussions. He just turned this back on her. He used this as a weapon. Um, I can't imagine that Mama Gwen doesn't know him like that. Um, she can't believe every word that comes out of his mouth. She couldn't even write that that uh, uh, character witness letter that she read. She couldn't have written that. And and the, if if I were to fault Mama Gwen for anything, it would be for her enabling him, uh, you know, financially and getting him on his feet rather than watch him, you know, let him see the consequences of his own actions, let him fail, let him feel what it's like uh, to be really punished uh, for his own thoughts and his own conduct and everything else. But she saves him from that. He would be homeless right now. Yeah. If it wasn't for her. Yeah. And strangely enough, I was having this conversation with one of my friends the other day. His daughter's causing him a few problems, and it seems to me that um, she doesn't take responsibility, and she thinks she's going to get bailed out every time something goes wrong. And um, <clears throat> it's that question of tough love sometimes is really required, although the, even though the child will hate you for it or believe that they do. It's got to be done. The world's difficult, and if... if you know, it's like, as she enabled his behavior, she was there at court for him. She tried, she stood up and said a little speech. She, you know, was that the right thing to do? Maybe not, but of course, her mother, you know, and I've seen this quite a lot with her. And I'm not, you know, I don't like to make any judgments of Lorne's mum because I don't know her and I, I, it's not appropriate. But I can only comment on what I'm seeing. And I've seen parenting where, like, children are doing the worst things like robbing people and all this really bad behavior and the parents refuse to think ill of the children like they won't even have they you know that the, the they're all on the side of the kids they won't because i think as also as well if they do it's almost like a reflection on them as well isn't it and maybe Absolutely. Yeah. maybe this is a possibility. Maybe that behavior comes from she believes or knows something about Lorne where she, 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 she won't like something, not specifically like some one particular incident, but she knows he went for a, a, a really difficult time. And, and he's milking it. Yeah, well, maybe. I'm just making a, like I said, it, it could be I agree. I think that she sense. feels guilty for something that's happened. In theory, I don't know. No, I don't. Uh, Queen is, <laughs> is great. I, I, 
I di- I disagree with that. I, you know, I don't think that she sees him as his little baby. I don't think she can't look at him as being a bad person. I mean, you know, we had kind of an advantage of being able to watch her in court. In addition to, you know, she's sitting only feet away from us. Yeah. And in, it was hard not to, you know, take your gaze off of Lauren and not look at her too. Cause you know, the, and, or the judge or whoever we're speaking, but she, she, she looked totally indifferent to me. She didn't look like anybody who was upset about no. what was going on. It was like she was just going through the motions. It, it, yeah. It, 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 she, I want, and she left there right away too. She didn't, yeah. when, when, when he was being let out, you and I, uh, I think maybe Watson and Sox too, walked up to the rail to get as close to him as we could as he walked by us. His mother wasn't anywhere around there. You would think that she would say, you know, son, you know, watch your cornhole or whatever, she, you know, whatever they said. And the way you that know. she spoke when she was saying his little speech that he obviously wrote, there was no emotion there. It was Nothing. just like I have Nothing. a son. Well, he has two dogs. It was. It was like she was just reading <laughs> off a fucking card that she found on the floor. And Lord's reaction. Joey sounds really priceless. irritated when she talks to him. <laughs> oh, Lord was yeah, the one who had that... emotions for both of them. Sorry, excuse me. Oh, I know he's sure dead. I, I think that could just be her general demeanor. I think she just kind of talks like that. I don't think she's the, you know, the the warm grandma, yeah, you know, type of a woman. Yeah, you know, I think she'll be well, sarcastic with you and else? maybe what? Like if she was like that when he was being raised. Well, she might be like that with a kid. You know, she might be, you know, friendly and and all of that when when it comes to kids, but. For her fifty-year-old son who can't get his shit together, who <laughs> is goes and drinks when he's told not to, and he's been given chances repeatedly, that she's just over it. I, I think that at this point she has to be over it. I think yeah. everyone's over it. I think, I think they have all had the conversations with him. You know, whenever. Lauren introduces a new phone girlfriend. Oh, this one's coming up, Lauren. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. You, you know, what did she I say think... one time? You're not going to sleep with her. You're not going to have sex with her. I would like love that. to bullshit see anyway. That was bullshit. Uh, she never said that. Um, no, that she, was for she... Jamie. No, with the uh, robot picture that, that that beautiful. Woman. Yeah, but I, I don't think I don't think that conversation ever happened. I think Lauren Lauren because. I assume a lot now, um, well, for a while, but that Lorne just lies about everything. I think he'll make up conversations. I think, you know, for example, like when when I first started as Casey and he was talking to Tony and Wendy about Casey and, and they were saying, oh, yeah, this you know, we could tell that there was something between you at the house. No, either they were trolling or that That's conversation never happened. It never happened. So he just, because nobody heard that happen. So, you know, he, in the way that Lauren romanticizes conversations, I think that he romanticizes a lot of things in, in his own mind. And he wants you to believe it as well. That's where, um, you know, that Tony and Wendy conversation came from, I don't even know at this point if that ever happened. Yeah. Because why would they? So, you know, just to go back to this point, um, I think that everyone's just over it. I think that's why you hear her attitude all the time. You know, here's a son who comes and asks her for money, even during that phone call. She said, oh, your friend from Florida is going to help you with your finances. Yeah. I told you I would do that. You don't go to her asking for money. You come yeah. to me. Oh, that was a burn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was such a burn. Yes. And I'm so glad that we were able to hear that because if you would have asked Lorne, you know, at any point, do you borrow money off your mom? Like, do you take money mm-hmm. off of her? He would say no. So it, I'm really so glad trivial. that we were able to see that. He, he was yeah, so super, he, superficial about that. Well, I didn't borrow right. money from you recently, you know, or she said, you right. borrowed and she's like, no. from me last week. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So 
I think a lot of a lot of the relationship that Lauren has with her is what he believes it should be on paper. I don't, you know, I don't know what his true mm-hmm. emotions are, obviously, but based on what I think I know about him and the fact that he doesn't have any empathy for people. And I think when you don't have that, you're really lacking in your relationships and having true emotions. And mm-hmm. so when it comes to his mom, somebody said earlier that her showing up at court and doing this was an obligation. And mm-hmm. I do believe that he believed that that was an obligation. She may have as well, knowing that there wasn't going to be anybody else. But from his perspective, that was an obligation for her, for her to do that. It's an obligation for her to allow him to use her car when he doesn't mm-hmm. have, you know, when his, his truck still works, but he just needs to get his parts truck in order to, take the Mm -hmm. transmission out and put it in that one. But everything is very, it's very transactional. Like he believes as an adult that his mother is still a parent, Mm -hmm. not a person who raised him, but is still his mother in the, in the sense that she still takes care of him. She's still, and you know, even with my own parents, they still do stuff. You know, my dad will still tell me to lock my doors and to park near a light. He's done that his whole life. And he probably always will. Even will he tell you adult, that if you but... don't, you'll, somebody will break in and rape you? <laughs> no, absolutely. No, okay. he would never say that. Yeah. He's not, he's not a Lauren, but you know, so, and, and just like with parents, like when they give you things and, you know, they do it because they want to do it. But Lauren expects that. He expects when he walks into that house and asks for money, his mother is going to give it to him, like his allowance. Yeah. So it's, yeah. Look at, look at the letter she wrote, she read. It wasn't about how much I love my son and how he's a good man. Right. He's misunderstood. It was, right. and, and it was about the inconvenience to me yeah the fine were to put him in jail that's how he mm-hmm. exists and my guess yeah. is when they prepared when he prepared that letter she, he, he probably did gild the lily and said a whole bunch of shit oh he's the nicest boy in the world he goes to bible school and all this whatever the fuck she and she probably said i'm not gonna say that i'm not, you know that's a lie i'm not, not gonna say that either and and they kind of got reduced down to this well will you at least say that i bought you that freezer we at least say something, something good about me, mom. Something. Yeah. <laughs> because Lon's whole being, his whole who he is, is all self-centered. It's all me, me, me. What can I get out of people? What me, me, me? That's his ego runs his life. The ego isn't real. It's a fiction. It's an illusion. That's why I say it's not that that nobody is truly evil. That's the perspective that I adhere to. So that's really the basis of my all arguments of this. Now, it, everybody, everybody looks at things differently. Um, the, the ego isn't real, and Lorne exists within his ego. He's lost in it. It doesn't mean that we don't identify when people do bad things, because ultimately that's all the that bad things that people do are. You know, it's when they act from the selfish ego, the perspective, that that thing that that the ego is self-serving creature. It's the mind not properly mastered because that's where we're at in a stage of uh, the human, the humans. You know, where we're at in our stage of development. You know, we're we're, we're trying to transcend that now, but <laughs> we're not having much luck at the minute. Um, and that's where you know all enlightenment comes in in spirituality, learning about those things. That's what, that's why I have a bit of a different perspective than most people. And um, Lon's sort of the reason he's fascinating to me is is because it's more exaggerated than other people's and more childlike and silly. It's just like. What the fuck is, you know, like the humour that's involved. And we've talked about it endlessly, haven't we? Because you get people like Lorna who just, you could think, I don't know, can you think of a predator that's like as selfish as he, as he is, but you're just not like, oh, that suck all character. It's not like Lorna's yeah, endearing. Pretty... He's not got any endearing qualities, but there's something uniquely interesting about watching him where you can just laugh at him. But you get somebody like that Jeff Sokol, and he's just like, ugh. 
Like, you can just look at Lorne and it's almost like he's not real. Do you, do you understand what I'm getting at? Well, so- Soko's got intelligence, which is different. Uh, you know, he, he he can articulate, too. Says says stupid, uh, says some pretty twisted shit, but at least he can make an argument. You know, uh, like that police interrogation that he had. Uh, he he was, he his, his, um, his demeanor was very confident. He was very clear about what he spoke. Lord was crying his ass off when he was doing it, but they got the same <laughs> inner, you're right. But the way they express it is totally different. Yeah. You know, I'm interested in also what people think about, you know, his, his mother is not exactly the picture of health. I mean, she's in her 80s now. She is diabetic. She's, I guess she's taking exogenous uh, insulin, whatnot, probably blood pressure through the roof. You know, she's, her, her best days are behind her. Let's put it that way. <clears throat> What's going to happen to Lauren when that happens? That's a good well, he's question. Gonna lose, he's going to lose his main support system. I think the glue that's holding other family members to him is going to be gone. In yeah. particular, his not necessarily Roy, because I think they do have a bond. But I think when it comes to the other siblings that don't really have anything to do with him outside of their mother, I think they'll be gone. So you think he's got some relationships that are only there because his mother's? Yes. Uh, is, okay. Yeah, because they're not, they, they don't seem to be relationships with him. They're relationships with him through their mother. Through, through so, her, yeah. Yeah, and, and I think that, you know, they're not the types to, I mean, he's never talked about going to hang out with Richard or Lori or, you know, Ralph. He doesn't ever talk about you know, doing anything like that. And in fact, when they do have family functions, like Christmas says, when it's not just his mom with Lauren, Roy and Paul, you know, maybe Paul has other family or whatever, but when it's not just her with those guys, she's off with the other part of the family and Lauren doesn't go. Yeah. So I think that definitely as soon as she's gone, I think he's going to lose really um a, you know the the tether to the family it wasn't always like that was it well i don't know i i think that he did i mean he did live on his sister's property at one point he built mm-hmm. himself a little a little house there or whatever it was <laughs> supposed to be uh <laughs> but well when he says so, uh, when he said somebody wanted me to move my house off their property that kind of tells you something right there so Right. He had a couple of guys go over and pull the boards down, basically, that were right. held together somehow. No Pump idea. Up tires. Yeah. So I think that perhaps there was a little bit more of a relationship, but certainly in in the later years, you know, I, I mean, things can always be different. We don't know Lorne when he's not off the phone. So yeah. we don't know you know, does he talk, does he talk to his brothers and his sister? He never mentions it, but you know, so, so I sort of have to think that it doesn't really happen. I don't think that he ever really had a great relationship with them. I think that he, for whatever reason, you know, maybe it could have been the age differences between all of them that they really weren't ever connected to Lauren that much. Well, there's not he that seemed much to, is there? Well, there's a little bit. I mean, I think, I think, to, to a certain degree, Lorne even looked at his sister as a mother figure. The fact that he muckled on her leg, yeah. uh, you know, as somebody who was almost a teenager, which is really funny. Yeah. But, you know, so I think he, he looks, he, Lorne seeks out nurturing wherever mm-hmm. he can get it. He seeks it out in his girlfriends. He, he just wants to be cared for but he doesn't make himself a lovable person no. in order to do that. He he doesn't give his mom and, and the attention that he claims to give her, you know, you can start a sentence and just mention the w- words, your mother, and he will start freaking out. He has no idea what you're going to say. He mm-hmm. instantly becomes defensive. 
And, you know, God forbid you call him a motherfucker because that's disrespectful to his mother <laughs> somehow. Mm-hmm. He literally, but, you know, mother. He literally, exactly. So, yeah, I, I think that when she goes, it's, it's going to be a very lonely time. And again, it goes back to the fact that Lauren does not make him a lovable person. He's not a good friend. And, and we've sort of seen that, you know, even, even when he speaks about Tony, you know, this is a man that he says is his best friend. And when he died, he goes on and on about to- how Tony screwed him over. <laughs> everything, everything is always about him. They screwed me over. It's always about him. 100%. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's pretty amazing. I think it's really interesting point and I didn't even think about that his mother is really the glue for his relationships with other people other people mem- family members because mm-hmm. if she goes I can't imagine that they would have any incentive other than if they have true love for him mm-hmm. uh, to want to communicate with him or interact with him they don't as it is right now and right. I think Lorne lacks well I was going to say Lorne lacks the insight to, to understand what's going to happen to him when his mother passes. Now, having recently experienced um, losing a parent, nothing can prepare you for it. Nothing. No matter how many people close you have gone through the same thing, how many books you read, it, it's like a fucking train. And there's a part of me that thinks Lorne won't experience that because he doesn't, he doesn't seem to have that love for her that I would associate with, you know, that I would associate as being, you know, usual, shall we say. Um, it's going to have some kind of an effect. It's probably going to destroy his ego because everything was kind of like, oh, I, I can't wait for you to meet my mother. and My mother raised me. She's important. It's like... Mm. It's something he's created to give himself an easier ride through life. My mother's great and I love her so much. He'll probably turn it into a victim thing. I've lost my mother. You can't talk to me like that. And the world has been terrible to me and all that bullshit. And then he'll probably use it against his siblings and probably make her going a leap to their fault and or something. He'll turn it around to try and be some kind of advantage to him. Because there's never been... I've not seen any genuine compassion for her. I don't know whether you guys can point to anything. From him? Yeah. Yeah, me either. I, I, all I've no. seen is burden, exploiting, uh, defrauding. That's, that's all I've seen. Kiffy, i got to ask you a question. How, how, throughout your relationship with him, <laughs> Sorry to say that. How but, dare you? <laughs> how often would he? Well, first of all, how far does his mother live from him, and how often would he visit her? Well, he he talked a lot about talking to his mother, so I think he called her a lot. I think he did call her. Well, that, that's different. That, was, that, that, that is was totally his, that's right, like right. Mailing but I mean, it in. Yeah. right. But I mean. As far as actually going to visit, I don't think he he did very often. I I would say he's less than ten miles away. So I don't yeah, know exactly the distance, but it's not it's not anything, you know, where he'd be driving a half an hour, or you know, so he can't make it there every day. I think it certainly could have been something that was doable if he was on the way home, he could stop in or or something like that. And I think he would he would make that effort when he would have to go and pick up something when she like had something for food him. Food stuff, right? Food, right. yeah, or and probably money. I'm sure yeah. that 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 happened a lot too, but certainly not something where he, you know, was just stopping over. Hey, I just wanted to come over and see how you were doing, because when because like we've talked about the way that he speaks about her and their relationship. And what actually happens is there's a huge space in between. Yeah, yeah. It's it's nowhere near what yeah. you would imagine it would be if you thought he was telling the truth. So you never heard of an incident where he recounted how, how he was just over his mother's and they just had dinner and sat around for a couple of hours and, and no. uh, then he left. It's, no. It's always a purpose. 
there was always a purpose. Yeah, as far as I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think he's... I... <laughs> Do you think he's going to – well, I think he will get, get, be broken up when his mother dies. I think he certainly will. And I think he'll really, again, guilt in, in front of other people, uh, you know, to really uh, try to garner sympathy for himself. Um, mm-hmm. But beyond the emotional aspect to it, I, I think that will be very short-lived for him. Uh, that's just my feeling. It could. It could. I mean, th- th- I don't believe this. But it's not within the realms of impossibility that it could have a positive effect on him. His mother's gone, and finally, he takes oh, what, stock. What world would that be? Oh my god! He, 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 some, you know, he's like, oh my god, um, she's gone. I'm on my own, and then he starts to look at the world a bit differently. Um, I can't see it. It's you know, it's wishful thinking. Yeah, yeah but I, I truly believe that every human has within, well, it has within them the seed of enlightenment. Um, you know, death, fucking death row murderers have, have become, have seen the errors of the ways and flowered, you know. Yeah, well, you know, again, that, if you let them out, let's see if they can really walk the walk. On that. Yeah, but you know, I, all I'm saying different. is that. I mean, I don't think that that is going to happen. Um, but Lon's, it it just interests me. He he, um, he always talks about it in an exaggerated way, like we've said before, and it, it, it's the cornerstone to his existence. I was raised by my mom, and keeps mentioning it all the fucking time to the catfishes, and that's the reason why he can't be bad to a woman and all this. It's, you know, it's it's um, yeah. Maybe it's because it's the only I don't thing. Think he's but he learned for it. the foul talk from his brother. <laughs> foul talk, yeah. The foul talk. <laughs> oh, calling women pieces of shit and stuff, yeah. 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 And Mom smoking never told as me well. Hit woman. Every 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 bad trait that he's got is inherited from his siblings. Even his tendency towards attraction to children are big because oh, of I, lack, I, oh, lack of food created I by disagree. him. I disagree. He's smoking. Uh, his bad language. Has been inherited from someone else. Well, I think he had envy for them. I think he he, mm-hmm. he idolized them, like he says he does, and he tried to be like them. You know, at least at least mimic their strength. You know, I think that was there. But I think Mama Gwen had a much bigger influence on him, especially when it comes to relationships. And and again, this sorry to repeat myself, but I believe my theory is that Dale was a cheater. Dale was somebody who was, uh, he was a philanderer. He's probably had other affairs. I mean, I mean, if we were just to go on the ridiculous situation where he stole, he stole his, uh, his, his uh, stepson's wife. I mean, this guy had no moral boundaries at all. It seems. Um, like Lauren. My, yeah. My guess is that mama Gwen and, and Dale were always in a, a fight every night about anything you know and i Mm -hmm. believe the cheating on me stuff or you're lying to me all came not from lauren's dad or dale but from mama gwen because she had a reason to say it um and that's where he learned how to act in a relationship that's my theory and of course going in front of a tv hmm Absolutely. The TV thing is, is a huge, is a huge deal. Like shows like Little House on the Prairie and Three's Company, you know, everything yeah. gets wrapped up in a bow at the end and everything's great and we all love each other. Um, but even, even looking at Lorne's need to be the victim, he needs to, to be the one who is wronged. I think that's where cheating comes in because cheating when committed is done by somebody else, 100%, you know, the, the responsibility of that is 100% on the other person. Mm-hmm. So he's able to sit back and just be like, well, you cheated on me. So, you know, I didn't do anything to make that happen. You did that. So mm-hmm. I think, but I do think that it could have been something that he learned from his mother's experience, because when Dale went off with Roy's wife, that wasn't her fault. That was mm-hmm. Dale's decision to do. And his mom was left there after 20 years of a relationship and have that gone. 
because Dale, you know, cheated that last time. I yeah. think that Lauren can, Lauren could have seen that and recognized that, you know, what, what is something that somebody does that, that would be 100% their responsibility. And I had nothing to do with it in the relationship. There was nothing that I contributed to that. He can say, you cheated on me. Yep. You cheated on, you know, You're fucking lying to me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you cheated on me. <laughs> uh, Tiffany, read OK Sync to me's comment. It's an interesting. Uh, let's see. Didn't Lauren claim he wanted Dale to adopt him at 30 or something? I doubt <laughs> Dale was a negative influence, Lauren claims, well outside of the wife stealing. Yeah, that kind of adds I don't, if, if that's true. I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah, I really, I have no idea what Dale's relationship was. <laughs> Can you imagine? With them. Adopting Lauren, yeah. yeah. Dale walks into a, he walks into a courthouse, and there's <laughs> there's six adult kid, kids standing behind him. Yeah, Lauren's the only exactly <laughs> little baby. And... But, but 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 the point of that, but the point of that is that um, if Lauren wanted Dale to adopt him, then Dale couldn't have been that negative influence. Yeah, I mean, true. I think I think too that. Dale cheating on his mother, especially the way that he did it, had such a, a th- an impact on him, you know, or or the, his opinion of him that everything else gets thrown out, yeah, out of the window, you know, yeah. yeah. So so all of those thirty, you know, thirty years, whatever that he was a stepfather, just is gone. But I think I think too the the relationship with Dale. The, one of the reasons why Lauren doesn't talk about it very much is that it may have been a little bit negative because of how envious Lauren is, how Lauren wants all of the attention. This is Lauren's daughter? chicken pie. Yeah. 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 This is, this is something special just for Lauren. Lauren wants to be special all the time. And I remember him saying something about how Dale wanted something cooked a certain way. And his mom, of course, would do it even if Lauren didn't like it. Wow. Wow. This, can you imagine that conversation of disclosing? Um, oh, by the way, uh, I'm uh, running off with my daughter-in-law. I mean, yeah, I wonder what that. Yeah, I wonder what the conversation was <laughs> for that. I think they ended up getting married too. Yeah, and and yeah. and he was mentioned in his prison letters too. How mm-hmm. um, how he doesn't? It's really weird the way he says it. it's 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 almost Oedipus like, you know. Um, uh, how Dale couldn't recognize a real woman instead of a pukey faced per- bitch like Laura, uh, whatever that w- girl's name was, whatever mm-hmm. her name was. But the way he was promoting his mother, you know, in kind of a sexual, he does that a lot. It's, yeah, it's, it's really kind of sick. It's it's gross actually. But the way he looks, and Johnny Tad, Utah, mm-hmm. Johnny Utah pointed out that his uncle was going to adopt him. I do oh, remember right. him telling that story that Uncle Clay was going to adopt him, and his mother said no. So Uncle Clay dodged a major bullet. <laughs> Could you imagine? Yeah, that was an early call too, wasn't it? That was yeah, was crying era. about it, wasn't he? I think that he was crying about it because he's going to look at Clay, who to Lorne is a millionaire, millionaire. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, he's, he's, uh, he has a lot of money. He probably feels like his life would have been different. He did say that. Yeah. Well, he didn't say why, but he said his, his life, life would have been different. different. He just fucked up on an even bigger scale. Well, if his mother was such an angel, then why right. would he be crying about the fact that she didn't let his uncle adopt him just because he was wealthier? Exactly, Amanda. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's just lip service again for his mother. It is. Wow. Well, the missteps of the lawn pass there. Wow. Um, yeah, so I um, I think we could... It's just... <laughs> th- there's not that much... Um, we have to piece everything together, and the problem is when we're trying to go over the past and that with most of it is Lorne's word that we've got and which is not reliable <laughs> so we have to try Probably and fill in a lot of the blanks don't we mm-hmm. 
I think I'm going to adopt well, I think... one. <laughs> I want joint custody. You have him. You have him at the weekends, and I'll have him at the week in the week. Yes. <laughs> It's interesting to me is that Lauren wants his girlfriends to to behave like a mother, even when they are significantly younger than him, half his age. I mean, look at Kayla. She was 13 and he wanted her to wake him up for his job interview Mm -hmm. like a like a mother would. So it 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 begs the question is, is he looking for a woman to um imitate the way his mother was with him when he was little or is it because he was lacking that when he was young or it could be he's looking for somebody to take her place when she goes maybe he's just Um, fucking lazy but i don't think he's prepared for her to go i i i don't think i don't think he's even considering that possibility uh that his mother's gonna die someday no i think he lacks the insight to truly to truly realize what will even begin to happen to him like i said you can't prepare but on some level you kind of can you can kind of not prepare can i put it you can kind of at least give yourself yeah a little bit and um the thing is as well he'll only be thinking from a selfish perspective and that'll come back to bite him on the ass if you go through your life just thinking about yourself continuously and you don't give anybody a second thought, your life is just going to be continual suffering, which is why he's like he is. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, he's just incapable. He he doesn't have that ability to empathise, which we've said a lot. Yeah. I wonder what... You wonder if the funeral of his mother is going to be like like Michael Corleone in uh, Godfather, where uh, he made Fredo come at a different hour to make sure that uh you know he wasn't he wasn't there with the rest of the family whether if lauren will have his own uh so you're saying lauren is fredo well yeah because uh, lauren is definitely fredo definitely fredo but but the thing is like you said tiffany when his mother dies that glue dissolves for any relationship that he has with other family who were merely just you know going through the motions with him just for the sake of their mother and if she's gone that's it so i think his relationships could get worse um or he could find himself lonely lord would be the kind of guy that would have no problem get being in solitary confinement for 25 years well i think that if you think about putting aside lawn's lack of empathy towards his mother or genuine feelings or whatever however you want to think about it She's all he's got. She's the. We've no. I know we've said it that we believe it's out of obligation, she? and that's probably true. But think about Lord's oh, yeah. go-to for anything is his mum. She'll stand up in court. She'll lend him some money. She'll lend him the car. She'll cook him food. I would imagine he. She's the only one that is going to give him anything ever, and probably as Roy kind of seems to give him a bit of a break, but. Obviously, Roy's got a lot of problems. So, Lorne, when his mother's gone, is going to have nothing. Nobody likes him. Doesn't have any friends. His siblings don't seem to like him. I'm sure some siblings will never speak to him again after this thing. And we certainly don't think his nieces mm-hmm. and nephews will. Um, so, he's going to be completely fucked. Up until this point, he's always had a little bit of a get-out, hasn't he? He's always had his mother to, to lean on. He has. And I I think that it it brings me back to a conversation that we had with Amanda James at the very beginning when she started streaming with us. And as a mother with a son, you know, what would it be like to have somebody like Lauren or, or your son committing a crime like this? And, you know, what she said obviously made a lot of sense in that it, for for a parent to to their child when you have the the real love and bond with that child you're not going to just leave you know because i think a lot of a lot of people can often say um oh yeah i would just tell him tell him he can go rot in hell you know mm-hmm. but you see it a lot too where even people commit murder or murder kids you know they still have their family sitting back in back of them at trial and 
you know, so I think that the family relationship is complicated, certainly from, from a mother to a child, you know, so it, it does make sense with that explanation that, that AJ gave that, you know, it's, it would be really painful to go through that experience. And it's not even really a question that you would just say, well, that's not my son anymore. I disown him. I'd be curious, Amanda, holding that. And by the way, I agree with that view. Um, you know, I'm a father too, but um, what if you were at to add to that, your son who refused to accept responsibility and made all of these excuses and whose behavior actually got worse. At what point do you just cut it off? I don't know. It's really hard to say. I, I don't have adult children. Well, I don't have children as old as Lauren, of course. So eventually, you know, you get tired of it. But I, even then, I don't think, I understand Mama Gwen feels like it's her her duty to be there for Lauren she doesn't want to leave him all alone in the cold. If he needs something and she can provide it, she's still going to do it because she's his mother. And I think I would do, I would do the same thing. I, I'm sure I, I would try to talk to him and try to get him to accept responsibility and understand. But some people just can't like Lauren, he he'll never do that. So is there uh, enough enough? Isn't, isn't there a point where enough is enough? It's just too much of a burden for you. I mean, you have to start thinking about yourself. Mm. especially when you're being consumed by this, by, by this person who, who's making them interjecting themselves into your life, the bullshit excuses out, never expect accepting responsibility for doing something. One of the most horrible things you could do as a human being. I mean, at some point, doesn't that wear you down though? I'm sure. I'm sure it would, but it's natural for a parent to, to push all that aside and see, I'm, I'm, it would be impossible to, to look at a grown man and not see, you know, the baby that you loved and raised and the little boy that, that you were so hopeful for. So how would you handle it? Would you keep arguing with him or would you just, just kind of roll your eyes and, and walk away? Kind of, well, you, of like course what she's doing. You have to create boundaries. Like if it's a finan- a financial thing like Lauren does, then of course you're mm-hmm. 50, whatever years old, enough is enough. I'm on social security. I'm not giving you any more money. Figure it out. But no, I don't think I would ever give up on my child. So I, I think based on that, I'm starting to understand a little bit more about Mama Gwen and how she's she's stuck with that, for lack of a better word, with that person uh, because he's his son. Just like you, you would always love him. Um, you don't always agree with him. But at some point, I think she reaches the point of of just – deafening herself to what he does and says mm-hmm. you know, yeah not... I, think so too. I think we've we've heard that from her she knows it's a waste of time i don't want to talk about that anymore you don't mm-hmm. listen you never listen you're too stupid mm-hmm. yeah and he says well nobody else listens either <laughs> <laughs> yes. so i guess so i guess we we can see how those conversations went mm-hmm. she probably was pointing out something to him and then he's like oh yeah well you know, and then follows it up with something really stupid and irrelevant. Oh. And tries to turn her against the other kids, like we saw. Mm-hmm. Oh, your right. other kids are so perfect. They yeah. never do anything wrong. And that's from jealousy. Yes. I think he... Yeah, yeah. Mom's only allowed to think highly of him, and he needs to remind her that they're all pieces of shit, just like her ex-husband. <laughs> can't live in yeah, the past she's, she's tired of it she's like oh you're talking stupid <laughs> you know it's funny I, I just came to the realization just listening to you that you know I kind of kind of feel sorry for Mama Gwen um, you know I don't know what level of responsibility she has for creating this monster um, but how she's reacting right now I think is kind of normal if you could take out the enabling part like you said the financial stuff let him because uh, that's not going to help but him. enabling is a perspective because one could argue turning up at court and saying that was enabling him one could argue even turning up at court was enabling him because everything I, I, he, a he, 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 supporting and enabling though mm-hmm. what's that 
there's a difference between supporting and enabling. Yeah, but what, what's what's the difference then? When you enable someone to... No, I mean, uh, give it like an example of Lorne's situation. I, and obviously I know the difference, but I'm just thinking about... Uh, to... um, just picking up the phone is supporting him and listening to him without, you know, saying anything. Uh, uh, you know, Lorne gets scared and wants to run to the woods. You know, come to my house, hide here if you want to, that kind of thing. But enabling him is like, uh, okay, here's a, you know, here's twenty bucks, to go, you know, which I know you're gonna go get beer, or here's, uh, um, uh, you know, oh yeah, uh, this although she doesn't do this, this girlfriend catfish of yours sounds like she sounds like she's she's the one, Lauren. This is you know that kind of thing. Uh, she doesn't uh, she doesn't actually enable his delusions, so to speak, but his his. His everyday existence, or his uh, his um, uh, necessities in life, that she enables him. Well, let's uh, for, look at the know, book for an example. Taken his... abroad, she paid or paid some money to him for that. Which, on the surface of it, you'd look at that and you think, lawsuit. yeah, you on the surface the of lawsuit. that, she if you didn't know, lawsuit. if you didn't know Lon and his story, you'd say, oh, you know, that's helping him out. Um. But looking at Lo everything that you would do to help Lorne is enable his behaviour. Because he everything well, that he does is criminal or selfish or stupid. Everything. The book, well, on the surface of it, giving him the money to write Taken Abroad would seem like a good thing. Or maybe he's trying to get himself sorted out and he's doing something that's positive. That's different. That's different. That's a bad example. A better example is sponsoring his lawsuit. Paying for that. But did she at the time? Out of it did she believe his bullshit? Because she believed his bullshit that, she, that he could write a book. I mean, she fucking read it. Well, I <laughs> Allegedly, I mean, I would support that. I would support that, I, and hope something came out of it. But to start a lawsuit about this, th these ass excuses you have for committing this horrible, horrible crime, uh, you know, and thinking that you're going to get some measure of justice on your side when in fact a lot of people don't feel like you know you you did enough time to begin with for that kind of thing you got to stop it there at some point and and i think nca just said enabling is support that goes beyond the betterment of the child well but, but that that's what i'm asking it. it's a difficult thing to actually quantify what that actually is in lawn's case because every help that you're giving him is leading to his own demise in a way and his own destruction and like you know the lawsuits the book everything that he does everything yeah, yeah. he's a lot you know he's 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 fucked <laughs> tiffany have you ever heard him ask or how he asks his mother for money have you ever i, I would imagine no. um you know a lot of times she, she would say i don't have any or whatever but have you ever actually witnessed him asking his mother for something no, I don't think he would do that. He, I think he kept well, a lot of stuff hidden. Yeah, he's not going to, because he he used to get so much shit for the money situation. Uh, the, yeah. Obviously outside of the Betty stuff, but even, even with his mom, you know, just the fact that he had this $5,000 debt, you know, that she handed over to him and, and he has yet, I guarantee it, pay anything back. You know, he he is going to continuously take. He may give he may give her a little bit if she demands it from him, but that's not going to come without that demand. He's not just going to see this obligation and, and pay it back to her. I'm, I'm wondering so, how he asked her. You know, whether he uh, he, he probably it's a demand or I wonder. No, he, he probably stops over. I think that that might be a thing. He may go and see her and just you know maybe as a matter of fact. Oh hey. Um, do you happen to have twenty dollars, or do you have a hundred dollars? You already know she has it. Yes, asks, I think. I think he, he's that kind of conniving guy. Like he knows when her social security checks coming in. He knows. Oh sure. If she's got extra money, that it's this inheritance came in. You know, he's been angry at a lot of times when Roy has borrowed money from her. Um, mm -hmm. and 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 one of the responses was that. Well, mom doesn't have money today. You know, she didn't she didn't mm -hmm. get paid, uh, you know, whatever it was. He knows he's on top of that. So when he goes over there, you know, he knows that the uh, that the cash register is full. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. So never heard it. I would love to though. Yeah. Because I bet you he's stammering all over himself. <laughs> yeah, he knows better than to do yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we go get his image. Uh, I'm gonna have to start wrapping up. Um, um, soon. It's getting a little bit late here. I've got to get up reasonably early. Um, but I think we've been gone through quite a lot. It's difficult when we're talking about how he was raised by his mom, and we don't really have an eye. We don't really. We're just piecing stuff together, aren't we? You know, and um, mm-hmm. brings up a lot of interesting points, though, about his siblings and you know. Uh, how that affected him and whatnot, and and um, his parents. I mean, it was it was. A, can we all agree that it was a pretty dysfunctional situation, wasn't it? I think it was chaotic. Yeah, I think we can all. She had more than she could handle with the with um teaching them properly teaching them there are consequences for their actions and I think she just mm-hmm. kind of let a lot of stuff slide because it was easier yeah. I would imagine she probably was reactive rather than proactive so she would yell at them for doing something wrong or being annoying or whatever but you know maybe she didn't have a lot of time to have that one-on-one mm-hmm. well in that relationship that. his his desperation for attention Mm-hmm. attention equals love in Lauren's mm-hmm. mind and as the youngest you would think that he would have gotten the lion's share of attention in the family mm-hmm. so I don't know if he is the way he is because he received too much attention or not enough I'm I'm guessing it's the the latter and he didn't I think it. so too I think he's just a whiny needy piece of <laughs> really <laughs> shitty kid. I, there's, I, there's I certainly can't imagine an element of that. there's no doubt about that yeah. um Right, I, I um, has anybody got any final points before we leave? I no, don't sir. Think so. Mm-mm. Right. Okay. Well, thanks uh, to everybody in the chat. There's been quite a lot of people. I knew it had uh, stir up quite a little bit of debate, shall we say? Um, I hope you found it interesting. Um. It's been great to leave everybody's comments. It's been good to have um, Tiffany back, even though she's been arguing with me. Um, <laughs> uh, I will always argue with I you. I know, I know. Um, but it's 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 one of the because asp- the thing is with the um, learning about Lorne's past and why he's a piece of shit. We can learn about ourselves because you know we're all human. We all share. <laughs> the same things you know so it's like we can learn more about ourselves if we consider ourselves to be decent people why what is it that we have that he doesn't why are we able to is it simply a decision and then you say okay well, what's free will and then think about that i love the deeper topics and i think most people that come here also have a little bit of that in them otherwise you just you know you just listen to the calls wouldn't you um this is you know we've always we always like to delve a little bit deeper um, and and the, f- the great thing is about Lauren, the topics never dry up. We've got fucking loads of ideas, haven't we, Shin? <laughs> <clears throat> Maybe not. <laughs> we won't be back for a while, just so everybody knows. Well, possibly <laughs> yeah. two or three weeks. There he is. Yeah. <laughs> right. Were you guys looking for me? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> oh. yeah forget it. <laughs> 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 what was the question? <laughs> um, I I I was just saying we've got lots of ideas for future topics. Mm-hmm. And then he said, "Right, Shen," uh, and then it was silent. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Well, at thinking. least at least we've had a confirmation now. Finally, anyway. Um. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, guys, I hope you've enjoyed it. It might be a while. Uh, I'm going on vacation tomorrow, and then Shin's going on vacation the week after, so we may have to, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be doing something. We'll, we'll get the Holy Grail finished when we get when we get back. So, um, yeah, guys, thanks. So, please, I'm sure there will be uh, lots of comments Um because there's been a, quite a lot of controversial things brought up, which is cool, because it's good. Um, but thanks, everybody in the chat. Uh, thank you to my friends who have joined me here. I hope you have a great rest of your Saturday.